Welcome to the Health Bulletin. On Wednesday, Deschutes County revealed that a Central Oregon resident has been diagnosed with the plague. Join us as we explore the reasons, symptoms, and historical impact of plague outbreaks, which persist, causing sporadic fatalities globally. This marks the first documented case in Oregon in almost 10 years. With the last report dating back to 2015, it is believed the person, identified only as a local resident, was infected by their cat. All individuals who had close contact with the resident and their pet have been notified and provided with post-exposure preventive medication to guard against potential illness. No other new cases have been reported so far. The case was diagnosed and treated early, posing little risk to the community. Before we move forward, if you're finding this content helpful and informative, please consider hitting the subscribe button below and stay updated for the latest in medical breakthroughs and health alerts. Now let's explore what exactly plaque is, understanding its transmission and the reasons behind the concern expressed by health officials. Plague is caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis, a zoonotic bacteria, usually found in small mammals and their fleas. There are two main clinical forms of plague infection, bubonic and pneumonic. The plague spreads to humans or animals through a bite from an infected flea or by contact with an animal sick with the disease. Symptoms of plague usually begin in humans two to eight days. After exposure to an infected animal or flea, plague can be a very severe disease in people with a case fatality ratio of 30% to 60% for the bubonic type and is always fatal for the pneumonic kind when left untreated. Most of fatality reported within one week of exposure but this is not an isolated incident. Worldwide, the WEO records 1,000 to 3,000 cases of plague annually. In the United States, plague has typically manifested as isolated cases, mostly in rural areas, on an average of 10 to 20 individuals annually. The most common animals to carry plague in central Oregon are squirrels and chipmunks, but mice and other rodents can also carry the disease. These symptoms may include a sudden onset of fever, nausea, weakness, chills, muscle aches, and or visibly swollen lymph nodes called buboes, and has a history of possible exposure to infected rodents, rabbits, or fleas. In such cases, clinicians should consider the possibility of bubonic plague. When left undiagnosed in its early stages, the plague has the potential to invade the bloodstream or lungs, intensifying its severity and complicating treatment. In cases of bubonic plague, death occurs when the bacterium Yersinia pestis breaks free from the infected bubo and enters the bloodstream, leading to the onset of sepsis syndrome. The EC's patient was historically referred to as the Black Death during the Middle Ages. The bacterium can also extend to the lungs, giving rise to a secondary condition known as plague pneumonia. If it reaches the brain, a critical condition called meningitis is triggered. The bacterium can spread to the lungs, causing a secondary plague pneumonia. Both of these developments carry a high case fatality rate. About 14%, one in seven, of all plague cases in the United States are fatal. From prehistory to the modern era, Yersinia, pestis has killed millions of people. Plague outbreaks continue to occur worldwide, affecting both developed and underdeveloped countries. Although modern medicine has greatly improved therapies, and limited its spread, but many clinical practitioners remain unfamiliar with its symptomatology. Thus preventing timely recognition and treatment is the key. If you experience these symptoms, seek medical help immediately. Antibiotic treatment is effective against plague bacteria, so early diagnosis and early treatment can save lives. Here are some tips to prevent the spread of plague. Avoid all contact with rodents and their fleas. Never touch sick, injured, or dead rodents. Keep pets on a leash when outdoors and protect them with flea control products. Do not allow pets to approach sick or dead rodents or explore rodent burrows. Pet cats are highly susceptible to plague and infected cats can transmit the bacterium to humans. If possible, discourage their hunting of rodents. Consult a veterinarian immediately if your cat becomes sick after being in contact with rodents. Residents should keep wild rodents out of homes and remove food, wood piles, and other attractants for rodents around homes and outbuildings. Do not camp, sleep, or rest near animal burrows. 
or areas where dead rodents are observed. Also refrain from feeding squirrels, chipmunks, or other wild rodents in campgrounds and picnic areas. Store food and refuse in rodent-proof containers. Wear long pants tucked into boot tops to reduce exposure to fleas. Apply insect repellent to socks and trouser cuffs to help reduce exposure to fleas. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more valuable medical updates,